best wishes for a prosperous and knowledgeable new year. Dear clients and listeners to my weekly podcasts, this weekly podcast comes in a different and slightly longer format, for it starts with my very sincere wishes to you and your dear ones for a prosperous and happy new year. Over the last days I have, as is tradition, exchanged such wishes with family members, friends and colleagues. And in the process I have observed a recurring refrain. It goes as follows. Let's forget 2020 and get back to normal in 2021. Well intended as that wish might be, I beg to disagree. For we should not forget 2020. On the contrary, if there is one year that we should remember, and probably for a long time to come, that year would be 2020. In my lifetime, few years, if any, have been so full of insights and lessons as 2020. How do I reach out to other people and maintain critical relations with them, all whilst keeping a safe distance? How do I ensure that the work gets done, the goods and services delivered, as per a new sort of remote control? How does society, how do different societies adapt to radical change? And indeed, how do I adjust to that by taking the proper investment decisions? As for getting back to normal in 2021, let me assure you, whilst all of us, quite naturally and deep in our hearts, yearn for some form of permanent normal. In human societies, there is no such thing as a permanent normal. The only normality I observe is a continuous evolution, continuous change. 2020 has accelerated that process of change and we have no choice but learn from it. My suggestion is to look at it from the positive side, to be grateful for it. After all, what's so bad about becoming more knowledgeable? Of course, 2020 has just finished and the pandemic is not over. There is still a lot of confusion about its nature and its consequences. The dust has not settled and as such, it's not yet 100% clear what the deeper lessons are that we have learned. Perhaps I should start, therefore, with what we have not learned. We are no less clear as to which system, type of economy and societal organization has done better than others in facing the COVID-19 crisis. East Asia and South Asia, for instance, have done well, relatively, but that entails vastly different countries, such as China and South Korea. And what about New Zealand? Second, whilst the United States, the leading economy and most important capital market in the world, has taken a beat, US asset prices have surged like few others. Scratching a bit under the surface of America's divided society and dysfunctional response to the pandemic, I actually observe something intriguing and fascinating. For all the talk of American decline, I observe an extremely, perhaps the most resilient economic and financial system. Yes, 
The country has to date suffered more than 360,000 deaths and the steepest peacetime contraction in economic growth. Yes, racial divisions are widespread, as is domestic distrust in the political system. Yet, at the risk of appearing a visitor from a different planet, let me make a bold statement here. Americans should enter the new year with more rather than less confidence in their political system. For in March, the country's vituperated political class, also known as the Swamp, actually approved unanimously the largest fiscal stimulus program in the country's history, reforming in the process the unemployment benefits to something more European style. It did so whilst Republicans controlled the Senate, and it did so in a record time. The close to 1 trillion top-up to the March package, which is now being negotiated, is taking more time. But be careful, it's taking more time because the President and the Democrats are asking for more rather than less money being put on the table. That is quite different from 2008 when the Congress voted down the initial bank bailout package because it was considered too generous. The third lesson I learned and would like to share with you is about the massive surge in digital investments, which the crisis has provoked, beating in one single year the combined investments of many prior years. Also, in the US, the UK, France, Germany and Japan, there have been significant rises in new company registrations. In the US in particular, many of these companies are not just startups created by individual workers who had lost their job because of the pandemic. No, they are so-called high propensity ventures, companies which are likely to hire new employees shortly after their initial formation. Indeed, labor markets and real economic activity are likely to recover much faster than they did in the aftermath of the 2008 global financial crisis. Finally, whilst I see a quick recovery thanks to the jump in digital investments, as well as the accrual and strengthening of data-based intangible capital on a global scale, total global savings will remain in excess of total global investments. Equally, global supply of goods and services will also remain in excess of global demand of goods and services. In other words, the rapid recovery will not lead us to the economic boom years we were used to before 2008. Rather, the post-COVID-19-2021 will still look pretty much like the last 10 years, characterized, yes, by rapid, even more technological innovation, but also by continuing sluggish, below potential economic growth. As such, inflation and interest rates will remain subdued. The key risk to this scenario is, of course, a massive escalation of fiscal stimulus in advanced economies, and in particular in the United States, something we are closely monitoring and cannot beforehand exclude, but something we'd rather see materializing over the remainder of the 2020s, instead of all now and here in 2021. So, what can we conclude in terms of 2021 investments from what we learned in 2020? Well, the basic thrust of our investment strategy, the validity of which has dramatically come to the fore in the midst of last spring's massive market correction, remains the same. Yes, we expect the vaccination normalization to temporarily boost value and cyclical as well as other short-duration assets. 
But COVID-19 is in fact accelerating, not halting the digital disruption of old economies. That disruption will continue to create a significant savings glut and thus persistently low interest rates, which maximize the present value of the cash flows generated by the all-weather new economy companies. Our well-diversified investment strategies are critically constructed around that vision. And I urge you to contact your relationship manager so as to determine the specific investment strategy that best suits your personal risk profile. More than anything else, all our strategies are based on knowledge and how to prudently use that knowledge in well-diversified portfolios. For prosperity can only flourish where knowledge is sowed. It is in that spirit that I renew to you my sincere wishes for a prosperous and knowledgeable new year.